basketball. That was my way out the hood. That was the only good thing in my life. And I see my son making the same damn mistakes as me and there's nothing I could do about it. Not just some druggy rich kid who ruined his life. And you always told me I was in control of my own destiny. There's always gonna be a price that's on you. What's up YouTube? It's your boy Mark Dark and I'm back with another video if you're new, if you love Bel Air, Go ahead and hit that subscribe button, like the video, and leave your theories, comments, everything down below. Now today, we're going to be talking about Bel Air Season 3, Episode 1. This is my quick thoughts, early impressions for Episode 1. As you know, they released three episodes. So as I told you guys, I'm going to start with Episode 1 and just go in order. Um, I have not watched Episode 2 or 3 yet. So for you guys down below, make sure you enter the comment section at your own risk because I already know it's going to probably be people that's going to spoil the next two episodes. As I told you guys, I will watch them all in order. Um, after I finish this quick thoughts video, I'm going to work on that recap for episode one and I'm going to release that probably in a few hours from now. So be on the lookout for that. And of course, I'm going to watch episode two and three and I'm going to get those videos out there for you guys, you know, soon enough. But man, what a great season opener in my opinion. I mean, I don't know what it is, but as I told you guys before, having Marlon Wayne's character return to the show, it just brings a different type of energy. Um, and this is why I love season one so much because that dynamic between father and son, that storyline, it was great. You know what I'm saying? So when we got to season two, I was kind of upset that we did not get to see him at all. But now he has returned and I believe it's going to make the story that much better. And it seems like the scenes that him and Will be having, they be fire in my opinion. You can just you know, feel the emotions, the tension between the two. We know that you know Lou, he wants to be in his son's life, but it's very difficult. He wants to be better. He is trying to be better, but at the same time, he still has things to learn, even though he, you know, he is Will's pops and he's older. He still has things that he needs to work on at the same time. We know Will, deep down inside, he wants things to work out between him and his pops, but he is very disappointed on how things have turned out. But in this season, we're going to see the two, you know, fix things, in my opinion, based off those trailers. I'm hoping they can rebuild and they can be better by the end of the season. But man, you know what I'm saying? I was happy with Marlon Wayne's return, especially in the first episode. As I told you guys, I didn't know what episode, you know, some of these characters were going to be in. But in the first episode, Marlon Wayne's return as Lou, and I think it's going to be great. Now, my quick thoughts, early impressions on Will and Lou in this episode was that, you know, Will, he's going to have to realize that, yes, it's going to be some ways that he is just like his pops. It's inside his DNA, right? The whole basketball thing. I mean, it is what it is. I understand he's upset because he's like, look, I don't want to be like him. You know what I'm saying? But at the end of the day, learn from your past mistakes and just do and be better. And that's exactly what I think he's going to do. Now, quick thoughts, early impressions on Jazz and Hillary. Man, that scene was funny. It had me cracking up. Your boy Jazz, he told Hillary that she's a coward right there in her face. And y'all know Hillary, she was upset about that. She was trying to squash things, trying to catch up with Jazz and everything. But deep down inside, we all know what time it was. We know Hillary, she was jealous when she saw Jazz come in there with that chick. You know what I'm saying? She's like, look, I got to go talk to him. And when she did, it did not go the way that she planned. And Jazz, he was like, look, all you're going to do is run. You know what I'm saying? You ran from me. And I'm pretty sure you're going to run from the markets when it's all said and done. And all that did was make Hillary even more upset. She said, you know what? Since you run in your mouth, let me go on out here and let everybody know what time it was. And she told everybody that her and Marcus, they are engaged and everything like that right in front of Jazz. So Jazz was pissed off by the end of the episode. And y'all know this is just the beginning because we know things may not turn out quite well between Hillary and in LaMarcus. Of course, we continue to bring up the parallels between the original show with Trevor and how Hillary and Trevor were engaged, but we know what happened to him. That boy did not make it. As I told you guys, we already know this season something major will happen to LaMarcus, so I cannot wait to see what that something is. But whatever it is, we know eventually that Hillary and Jazz, they're going to be making out 
soon. And I cannot wait to see how this all going to play out. Now, quick thoughts, early impressions on Jeffrey and his son. Um, Y'all know in this episode, your boy Jeffrey, he was stressed out. He was paranoid. He already knows what time it is. His past is coming back to hunt him, right? And he wants to look out for his son no matter what. He knows that that London gang, they have found him, the location. And it's just a matter of time before something major happens. So he wants to make sure the security system is up to par. He is training. He is making sure that he is going to stay in shape just in case something pops off. Because we know eventually it will. Now, we already know that his son will have interactions with Will and Carlton. I cannot wait to see when that's going to happen. Now, quick thoughts, early impressions on Aunt Vib and Uncle Phil. We know it's some tension in the air. And hell, Erica, she wasn't even in this episode. But we know deep down inside they're going to have issues. It seems like Aunt Vib is kind of getting tired of Uncle Phil. Uncle Phil was trying to clap those cheeks. Uncle Phil, you know what I'm saying? He wanted to have a good old time. You know what I'm saying? They was putting on the front like everything is all good. But we know deep down inside... They have issues and those issues eventually need to be worked out soon because if not, things will not end well for the both of them. Now, quick thoughts, early impressions on your boy, Quentin, played by Vic Manta. We already knew what time it was. I told you guys he's going to be like a mentor to Will and Carlton. We know in this show he's like a former MMA fighter or whatever and he's retired. He's a businessman and of course, we know it was just a matter of time before he's going to work with Will and Carlton. I told you guys in my final predictions video that I believe that he will have some type of influence on them with their new brand, Black Cess. Um, as of right now, we have not seen that in episode one, but we know by episode three, we should see you know some details about what's going to happen with all of them. Now, quick thoughts, early impressions on your boy, Coked Out Carlton, the boy that went to rehab, you know what I'm saying? Trying to keep himself together. And we know he was struggling in this episode, but he had some support. Of course, Will is always going to be there for his cousin, but he had another support system, Amira, his new love interest. Now, we talked about her character in the last few videos. I told you guys she's going to be a problem for Carlton. In this episode, she was trying to kick it with Carlton, get her cheeks clapped. I mean, she was trying to have a good old time. But guess who was not feeling that? Aunt Vib. She's like, look, I ain't going for that. Y'all talking about y'all just friends. She ain't stupid. And Aunt Vib, this time, she's like, look, I'm not about to sit up here and give you the benefit of the doubt anymore. She on Carlton's neck this season because the first two seasons, she was being all nice and stuff like that. But not in season three. She ain't going because she felt stupid for the things that Carlton did and all the lies that he told her the last two seasons. So now she's going to be on him a tad bit more. And even though he does not like it, it is what it is. So he's going to have to deal with those consequences. But it was good to see that him and Ashley, you know, kind of squashed things. She gave him a hug or whatever. She felt bad about the things that he was on last season and how he basically disrespected her. But Ashley was on his neck. She was not about to sit up there and allow him just to sugarcoat everything. And by him being able to express himself and tell the truth, it's actually helping him. So we're going to see how things turn out this season. I'm going to tell you right now, I see it being very difficult for your boy Carlton just based off this first episode and based off that this season trailer, you know it's going to get crazy. Now, as I told you guys, I'm going to drop the full recap um, probably in a few hours with more details, we're going to go over more things about episode one. But man, it was a great season opener and I cannot wait to see the next two episodes. But I want to thank you guys once again for all the love, all the support, and I'll catch y'all on the next one. But let me get up on out of here, man. It's your boy Mark Dark. I'm out. Peace.